In this lesson, we're going to learn how to adjust the awareness of the player, whether it be in the property table, or we'll look at how we can set the property inside a flow graph to dynamically change the primary and secondary FOV of our player. So what we want to do is go to AI and first draw out a navigation area for it to operate in. I'm going to double click to finalize it. The next thing that I want to do is go back and we're going to grab an entity, which is an AI, character, human. I'm going to double click and add him to the center. So if I press play, the actor can move about, and if I press middle mouse button, it's clear that he's completely interactive inside of his navigation area. I'm going to disable that, and then now what I want to do is I want to activate some debug draw. So going to console, what I want to do is type in AI underscore debug draw, and we're going to press enter and then set that to 1. So with this, we can actually see our debug draw of our awareness. The cone right here, we have a primary that's white, and we have a secondary that's middle gray. If I were to press play, you can see the cone that looks around. And this is the basic awareness or understanding of how the player can interpret the world and basically zone in and identify threats. So now let's turn off of the AI physics and let's change this manually inside of the property table. So I have the FOV primary and we're going to change that to 40 and we'll change the secondary to 80. So you'll immediately notice that the cone is way, way, way more confined. Also, be aware that if you don't see the cone, you're going to want to do AI underscore draw agent FOV. So we'll set that to true, and that'll get it up on the screen if you don't see it. So now with that we have that set, we can go ahead and hop in, and it's going to be a lot harder for the agent to actually see where we are. So even on this edge right here, he kind of knows that I'm here, but his FOV barely saw me. And you can limit that and go even more extreme in the sense of lowering the cone value on the primary and secondary itself. So now we're going to look into another thing, which I'm going to use input to basically dynamically change the secondary, since it's so wide, to be something like 10. So I'm going to right-click and create a flow graph, and we'll call this one aware underscore FG. And then I'm going to go to the flow graph and what we want to do is set the entity property. So inside of entity we go to property set. We want to add the graph entity because it is the actual AI character. And before I go into the property and the value, let's go ahead and create Q input key and we'll set this to be on pressed as set. So let's go ahead and grab the property and we'll go down to properties and we can see inside a perception that we can change the secondary FOV. Now let's make that something like 40. So we're going to see it collapse heavily based on us clicking this input key. Let's go ahead and make this key the letter P. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to rip off the flow graph and we're going to put it in the bottom here so we can kind of dynamically debug it. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to click this bug icon so I'm able to see exactly what it's doing. So I'm going to hop in and we can see the guy right there and if I press P you'll see that now his secondary FOV has collapsed. And it's as simple as that and you can time this not with input keys but maybe you have track events or you have proximity triggers that will dynamically change the awareness of the player, so then you can have interesting scenarios like assassinations that typically would not happen unless you trigger the event in your level.